Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. This week, to continue our Halloween theme, we are making a cotton candy cocoon with popcorn from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. If you haven't seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space, it's a 1988 horror flick that was the first and only film by the Kyoto Brothers, who, while you may not recognize their name, you'd likely recognize their work, both as incredible stop-motion animators as well as expert puppeteers. While not a big hit in its theatrical release, the film went on to become a beloved cult classic. And it all starts with Mike and Debbie, who, after their makeout sesh on this inflatable boat, is broken up by a bright object flying across the sky, go looking for the shooting star, and instead, find a circus tent. But soon they discover that that tent is not a tent at all, but rather, a spaceship. One belonging to, you guessed it, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Right you are, Dean Warmer. And with one clown coming their way, Mike and Deb hide in a room full of cotton candy cocoons, which will actually be our cocktail, and you'll see why later. Inside of these cocoons are dead bodies, one of whom is a familiar kid named Joe Lombardo. They are then busted by a clown who chases after them with a popcorn gun. But luckily, Mike and Deb are able to escape, albeit covered in popcorn. If, like Debbie, you're wondering, Popcorn, why? Because the clowns, that's why. With the killer clowns following them back to the conveniently clown-obsessed town of Crescent Cove, Mike and Debbie go looking for help from police officer Dave, also Debbie's ex, and tell him all about the cotton candy. Cocoons! Cocoons. Yes, cocoons! And after the sentient popcorn attached to Debbie spawns into more killer clowns, Debbie is captured into a giant balloon, which Mike and Dave eventually track down in the cocoon room, where they then see a clown use a silly straw to drink the blood from one of the humans directly from the cocoon. But before we start our cotton candy, we're first going to make two different syrups that will be in the blood cocktail that will go inside of our cotton candy cocoon. The syrups start in two saucepans, the first of which is for a grenadine, and the second of which is for a raspberry syrup. Now you could use this store-bought grenadine, but it really isn't very good, so just go ahead and throw it away. Our grenadine starts with two cups of sugar, followed by two cups of pomegranate juice, as well as two ounces of pomegranate molasses, in addition to one teaspoon of orange blossom water. And finally, an ingredient that isn't standard in homemade grenadine, a drop of red food coloring, which is really just going to enhance the blood effect that we're going for here. And our raspberry syrup starts with, well, raspberries, of course. I'm using a six ounce package, but this this recipe actually works better with eight, followed by half a cup of sugar as well as half a cup of water. Then we're going to bring both of these mixtures to a boil and simmer for 30 minutes each. And when our grenadine is finished, we'll funnel it into a bottle, trying our best not to spill. And also making sure the bottle you're using is actually big enough to hold all the syrup or else, well, you're gonna have a bad time. And now we're gonna refrigerate this grenadine and then similarly strain and funnel the raspberry syrup into another bottle pressing down on the fruit to push the syrup through, just like we did with the banana syrup in our Godfather Part 2 episode you can watch here. Then we will likewise refrigerate this syrup until cocktail time. Now, to make the cotton candy, actual machines can be pretty expensive. So we're gonna make Dragon's Beard, a hand-pulled cotton candy which according to legend was created during the Han Dynasty in ancient China by an imperial chef looking to create a new confection for the emperor. The emperor loved the chef's hand-pulled creation because it reminded him of a... A, a dragon's beard, I guess? I don't know. Why don't we just head on to the stove and we'll get started. Our dragon's beard starts in a medium pot, to which we'll add five cups of sugar, which we'll try and pour into the pot as evenly as possible, as well as a half a cup of corn syrup, in addition to a teaspoon of vinegar, which is crucial to the process as it inverts the sugar and makes it pullable, followed by two cups of water, mixed ahead of time with a drop of red food coloring which you definitely want to do ahead of time as you don't want to disrupt this mix once everything is in the pot. Then we are going to need a candy thermometer, which is actually pretty crucial to this process as once again, you do not want to touch this mix once it starts boiling. I repeat, do not, under any circumstances, touch it. Don't touch it! Seriously though, don't touch it because if you do, it will cause crystallization and the sugar will not be workable. Now we're gonna boil this mix and bring it up to exactly 269 degrees which will take a little while, so just keep your eye on it. And as the mix boils, brush off little crystals that form on the sides of the pot. 
I couldn't actually find a brush, so I used this spatula and it worked just fine. So continue waiting for the temp to come up, and while we do, we'll prep these silicon molds, which I'll put a link for below. I got these donut shaped ones because it'll save us a time consuming step of making a hole in the candy later. And then, once you bring this up to exactly 269 degrees, you want to cut off the heat. The temperature will naturally rise to 271 degrees, which is totally fine and exactly where you want it. If you're using plastic molds, the syrup should be substantially cooler than with the silicon molds, into which you can really pour in almost immediately. Then, once the syrup's cooled down a little bit, pour it slowly and evenly into the silicon molds. Then you need to let these molds completely cool down to room temp overnight or for at least 3-4 to four hours. And when they're solidified and cooled down, they're gonna look like this. And now it's time to pull our cotton candy, so we'll head back over to the table. And so into this big old baking tray filled with cornstarch, we are going to put our large candy donut, which you're then going to dip inside the cornstarch. Then what you're gonna do is squeeze on that candy and pull it, elongating it into a small small tire shape. And from that tire shape, you're going to continue forming it into an even bigger circle which will resemble a hula hoop. And once that circle is about arm's length and resembles a candy rope, we are going to fold it into a figure eight shape, and then fold the ends of that figure eight together now giving us two total strands of candy. And the more strands you make, the thinner and more melt in your mouth the dragon's beard will become. But I had a few problems on my first attempt. The first being that I got tangled up pretty quickly when making the figure eights. So you really want to make sure everything is even each time before you do any folds. Secondly, I also discovered that I used a bit too much cornstarch on my first attempt. And the final thing I realized, which I only discovered at the beginning of attempt number two, is that this tray was too small to fit the large rings and was part of the reason I got tangled up. So I ditched the pan and started working directly on the table. This made the task far easier and less cumbersome. So again, I made the candy into a large hula hoop and proceeded to make a figure eight and fold that on top of itself, creating two strands. And then I repeated the process, remembering to keep everything more even this time and fold it again into a figure eight and over again, giving us four strands. And soon those four strands turned into eight. Then the eight became 16. And from 16 strands, it became 32 strands. Then I folded 32 into 64 strands. 64 strands turned into 128 strands. And after 128, the strands became 256, folding onto itself again, becoming 512, and again into 1,024 strands folding once more into 2,048 strands, then 4,096 strands, followed by 8,192 strands, and I just couldn't stop creating 16,384 strands. And a strand-making machine, I went all the way up to 32,768 strands, but this ultimately proved to be too thin of a dragon's beard, as when I tried to stick it to the cup that you'll see later, it tragically wouldn't stay stuck. So, while texturally and taste-wise this was actually the best batch I made, it really wouldn't do for our cotton candy cocoons. And as you can see in this hastily filmed pickup shot, I had to make an entirely new batch of candy. But at least I remembered my brush this time, and after buying some new cornstarch and several hours of waiting on the molds, we were ready for take three. Now, this time I knew I couldn't go overboard with my strand making, so this time I played it a heck of a lot safer. In fact, I might have actually played it too safe cutting myself off at only 512 strands. In retrospect, I probably could have taken it a little bit further, but I really wasn't taking any chances. Also, to be honest, after three rounds of doing this, my arms were starting to feel a bit like this. So I made a tear in the dragon's beard, and then with this plastic light bulb cup I found on eBay, a similar one of which I can put a link for below, I painted the corn syrup onto the sides of the light bulb cup. Then, carefully, I wrapped the dragon's beard around the sides of the glass, adhering it to the light bulb using the corn syrup. Then I brushed on some more and secured the rest, putting a little corn syrup glue on the ends to seal it in place, revealing a now nearly perfect looking cotton candy cocoon which we'll set aside while we make our popcorn. Luckily, after that dragon's beard, our popcorn is quite simple. To a medium pot, we will add four tablespoons or a quarter cup of vegetable oil, as well as a half a cup of popcorn kernels, only one of which we're gonna add right away, which becomes an easy indicator of when our oil is heated up to the right temp. So into the pot goes our one kernel, then on goes our lid, and any minute now, that kernel should be popping. Oh, there it is, that was quick. Now we gotta act fast, and swiftly add in the rest of our popcorn kernels. And as the kernels start to pop, we want to shake the pot back and forth every now and then to shake the unpopped kernels down into the oil. And like with microwave popcorn, once the popping slows down to every second or two, that's when you cut off the heat. Then we are going to add the secret ingredient to movie theater quality popcorn at home. And that ingredient is Flavacol. 
Don't ask what's in it, just know that it's the seasoning salt that is used in pretty much every movie theater everywhere. So just add approximately half a teaspoon, which I usually divide into eighths, sprinkled onto the popcorn. Usually I shake or mix the popcorn up in between the eighths of Flavicol, so that the Flavicol spreads evenly throughout. And once our popcorn is ready, it's time to make the blood cocktail that'll go inside the cotton candy cocoon. So into a small shaker tin we will add two ounces of gin, as well as three quarters of an ounce of Chambord, which is a delicious French raspberry liqueur, followed by a half ounce of our grenadine, in addition to a half ounce of our raspberry syrup, as well as a half an ounce of pomegranate juice, and finally a quarter ounce of lemon juice. Then we're going to add some ice to our big tin, and lock in our small tin, and give our blood a good shake. Now we're going to grab our popcorn, which yes, is in fact in an R2-D2 popcorn bucket. Then we're going to put a few little scoops into one of these popcorn containers I found at Party City. Then we'll set down our cotton candy cocoon and double strain and funnel our blood cocktail into the cocoon. Next, I'm going to lock on this cap which came with the cup that I painted to resemble the tops of the cocoons in the movie. And what would a cotton candy cocoon be without a silly straw? And there you have it, your cotton candy cocoon with popcorn is finally done. Now there's nothing left to do but to take... <sighs> You know, I'm at the point where I've just fully embraced the chaos of this episode. <laughs> so let's just reset here, and at long last, your cotton candy cocoon with popcorn is finally done. Now there's nothing left to do but to taste it. So we'll start with some of our popcorn, and if you've ever wanted to make homemade popcorn at home, just buy some of this Flavicol, because it instantly gives it that authentic movie theater quality. But how does this popcorn pair with a cotton candy cocoon? Well, let's get a sip of that blood inside our cotton candy cocoon, which I really didn't want to disrupt, and the silly straw only went so far, so I just took the whole plate. Oops, but watch out for those silly straws though, or they might leak on you. And wow, what a refreshing beverage. What's cool about the blood cocktail is that on the inside, it's like blue raspberry cotton candy, and then on the outside, which I actually am reminded I should probably taste on camera, has the unmistakable taste of pink or vanilla flavored cotton candy, except with just a bit more toothiness and texture. And the sweet taste of both the cotton candy cocoon and the blood cocktail go perfectly with that saltiness from the popcorn with that flavor call. These two really are a match made in outer space. Before I knock anything else over, let me just say that with Without a doubt, this perfect sweet and salty pairing is most definitely worthy of two thumbs up. Oh, and happy Halloween. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Tell us what you'd like to see. Leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Full recipes will be included in the link in the video description. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Consuming Cinema. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from Silence of the Lambs. Thank you for watching.